So debugging in Gem5 is relatively straightforward. Um, so and we're going to start talking about debug prints in Gem5, mostly. So Gem5 has this specific class called debug class, flags, where you can enable certain print statements throughout your code. And you do that by calling, like, putting that print statement in there when you're developing uh, your sim object, um, like with a function, with a call to, or with a macro called dprintf. So, uh, and again, like deep, debug flags uh, have specific target statements. Not so when you, it's not like you enter debugging mode and everything prints. You can specifically specify what prints to be actually shown to you. So. If you go ahead and type, like run gem5 with minus minus debug help, you'll see a long list of debug flags that you can enable. I think Xantong or Jason have gone through this before. So you can see a lot of these debug flags. Every last one of them has a use case. There's a lot of them. So you have to be quite careful with which one you use so that like, you don't create this massive file with a lot of just text. It's also, I want to mention that when I use debug flags, I use like grep things like grep and like ps and like line count or filter out the whole trace because sometimes the debug flags, just the way that they're designed, are not as specific as you may want them to. OK. So, just to, so the process of creating a debug flag is very easy. Debug flags are not associated with any specific sim object. So it's not like, for ev like a debug flag can be used by one sim object. And for you to like, define a new debug flag, all you can do, or all you have to do, is just define it in any SCON script, and you can use it in any uh, sim object, anywhere in this code base. But again, for the sake of having um, structure, let's go ahead and define this debug flag called hello example flag in the same directory as hello sim object. We'll see that the debug flags are also have an auto-generated header file that we can import. So let's go ahead and uh, actually do that. So I'm going to open up the scan script and copy the block of code from the second slide deck. So. Let me get to the slides. Oh. OK, so I'm copying the code block from, sorry. Uh, slide 6, like the first and only code block in slide 6 into my scon script, like so. So this is my scon script. What I've told scons to do is like create that auto-generated file and like create that struct that I'm going to use for debug printing. OK, so back to using it in C++. OK. So for now, we're going to still keep the IO stream and standard C out because we want to see the differences uh, between like, using C out and dprintf. But what we need to do right now is import two things. So if you go to slide 7, uh, there are two include statements in the code block. And you sh they should look blue to you. Maybe depending on your computer's settings, they might have a different color. But what I'm doing right now is copy and paste the code block in slide 7 into my hello some object.cc. Again, reminding us of the right include order in Gem5. So the header file for the sim object itself, stand, like standard C libraries, and then Gem5 libraries. So 
and the imports should have to be on alphabetical order. Um, so what I'm doing is import base slash trace dot hh and debug slash hello example flag dot hh. Again, I can trust that that file will be there when I compile gem5 because it's an auto-generated file. The reason I'm importing base slash trace dot hh is because I'm going to use a bunch of macros to debug, use debug printing, and they are defined in base slash trace dot hh. So you can find more of them in trace dot hh. There will be some information at the end of this slide deck um, on those different macros. We're not going to get into them today. You can find more information there. So next up, what I'm going to do is copy and paste the last line, or actually the whole code block on the right on slide 8. So the code block on slide 8 on the right. All of it. And I'm going to clear everything. And voila. So, so the only difference here is that I have added this statement. So a dprintf. And the first argument that I'm going to pass is the name of the debug flag that I'm using. So what I'm telling C++ Gem5 to do is, whenever that debug flag is enabled, print this string. And this is a formatted string, um, specifying a string, like prepending it with a name of the function. So this is quite handy. I really like doing that. Again, this is a matter of personal preference. You wouldn't see this style followed everywhere in the Gem5 code base. But again, if you want to develop something for Gem5, it is really helpful to have the name of the function in your debug prints. So underscore, underscore, func, underscore, underscore. And then we're going to uh, add this. So we're going to recompile Gem5 and see what happens. Again, you all should have to be familiar by now on how to recompile Gem5 or compile Gem5. To OPT minus J8. Hopefully, I didn't make any typos or mistakes. And again, there are red squiggly lines here. We'll see them go away when we compile. Oh, by the way, make sure to save your files. Um, OK, you see that uh, null debug hello example flag that HH is created. So now we can go ahead and take a look at the, how the code looks like. So again, we have to go to the build directory. Since this is an auto-generated file, there wouldn't be like a file with that name in the source directory. So if we go to build null debug and name of the flag, hello example flag, dot hh, we should see a definition for that flag right there. OK. And as you can see, there is a union called hello example flag that does some interesting stuff that I cannot explain and don't know what it is, but let's just use it. Um, OK. So. Uh, I think Zantong mentioned this uh, when she was talking about running things in Gem5. Um, there are two ways you can enable debug flags. So one of them is through enabling them in the Python script. So to do that, you need to import m5.debug.flags. So if you look at slide um, 12 in the second slide deck, you, you'll see everything that you need to do to enable hello example through Python, but that's not what we're going to do. What we're going to do is like enable that on the command line. Although 
I think it's a better use of debug flags to do them in Python. In Python, you, you have more control over where to print and where not to print. So like, let's say if you are running into a bug in your sim object and you want to debug it and you know it's happening somewhere like that correlates with execution of your workload you can, and that point happens to be inside your ROI, you can enable the debug flag when you hit the ROI. So you don't get this massive trace before, like just because you're booting up Ubuntu or you're doing, like initializing your arrays. Okay, so again, not running things from the gem5 directory, running from outside. Uh, Again, path to my configuration script, second hello example. So if we run second hello example, since we had set num hellos to three, there are three prints, but we don't see that debug print, right? If we were to see it, there should be the name to the hello sim object constructor. And now let's also go back and see if that default that we gave to num hellos works or not. So if you remember, we tried to run first hello example and it didn't work because it didn't have a default value. Let's try running it right now because it has a default value and it should work. And what do you know? It works. Um, so now let's go ahead and enable that debug flag. So the way to enable debug flags is through passing this argument to the gen5 binary through minus minus debug flags. And then you can list all the debug flags that you want to enable, be enabled uh, as a comma separated list. So hello, example name, example flag. And I'm going to run it. Now you see that there is a print at tick zero in, from the sim object named my R inside the hello sim object function that prints that statement. And they are assertions. So I strongly, strongly encourage you to use assertions in your code. You're not designing, um, like the way that you write C++ code in Gen5 is not the usual way that you code. Like you don't, you expect everything to happen linearly. And some change that you make in one line of code in one function will change things in the future. So having assertions around all the assumptions that you have in your head when you're designing this is really helpful. So like, for example, if you don't expect to get a read request at some point, like at any point during the simulation, you, I strongly encourage you to use an assertion that says, this cannot be a read request ever, right? So Gem5 has its own facilities for assertions, and I actually uh, encourage you to, to use them. So I don't know if it has static, static assert, which are kind of assertions that happen at compile time. So like you can assert the size of a data structure to be like some number of bytes. That is really helpful to do again. Um, but when it comes to asserting during uh, runtime, Gem5 has two sets, so panic and fatal. So you want to use panic and panic if when you want to prevent or notify the user of a developer mistake. So for example, if you don't expect to get any read requests in a certain function, you have to type panic if request is read request. So you're going to panic if you get a read request. And fatal are for preventing user mistakes. So for example, if some parameter of your sum object is capacity, it couldn't be negative. So you're going to put a fail if and say, if capacity is smaller than 0, then fatal. Tell the user this parameter cannot be negative, or things like that. And then we're going to see examples of panic if later on when we look at how to develop with ports. If there are no other questions, um, this is useful material for you to go look at. So again, slide number 18 in deck 2, and uh, trace.hh, base slash trace.hh. You can go ahead and uh, look at different functions for debug printing, but for the sake of time, I'm not going to explain them. So basically, some of them allow you to debug without having a sim object or having the function 
that you're printing the debug, not having a name, 